Okay, so uh, this video today, uh, upside down for me and y'all, because yeah, I have my camera flipped around. But uh, okay, yeah, today's video, uh, this is the board that uh, Michael sent us. Uh, he's the guy that's been helping me uh, with programming these microcontrollers. This one is a Trailblazer instrument cluster. It has the 9397364. Um, microcontroller on it it's the one that has infineon and siemens or simons or however you say their name i don't know it's a german company i'm american i don't need to learn how to say there we beat them in world war ii um <laughs> but um yeah the uh microcontroller uh this one you can't find replacements for uh, out of China, at least I haven't been able to find any. Uh, UT Source has some that it's like call for a quote. You ask them for a quote, and they say they don't have any. So, because I've I've messaged them, I asked them if they had any. Uh, but yeah, so you can't find a replacement for these. Uh, but it's the same package size and same family of chips. So I think I think I can replace this with the ones off of the Silverados, the, uh, the 9399059. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to take this chip off of here. We're going to put this one on and uh, put the uh, firmware onto this off of there. Uh, I've already downloaded the firmware off of here to save it. Uh, my original plan was to throw this on a Silverado board because I'm more familiar with them and would be able to recognize a problem faster. But since I can't get replacements to this microcontroller, I don't want to break Michael's microcontroller. I don't want to let the magic smoke out. So if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it on this board, let the magic smoke out of one of my microcontrollers instead. Um, so that's, that's going to be that. And I, I now have a bunch of these microcontrollers uh, from uh, doing that video with Jeff on the other ones because I replaced all his microcontrollers with his new ones he bought except for this one this one this one's actually one of the new ones he bought but it, it got a bunch of bent pens and shipping so I, I don't know I'm too lazy to straighten them out and I already shipped his box back to him I, I meant I meant to put this in the box uh, I, I, I really did mean to send this one back because I don't know I'm, I'm not gonna bother straightening pens uh, I, I don't know if he would so but I have all the ones that I replaced still, and after fixing those odometer zeros on there, you know they're all they're all new. So I, I ended up with a couple of of microcontrollers. So I'm gonna use one of these on uh, on Michael's board here, uh, put them on there, and see if we can uh, see if see if these can be replaced with the uh, w with the other one because. It, if we can replace the Silverado one onto the to uh, onto the Trailblazer, that means the Trailblazer one can go on to the Silverado. Because although we can get the Silverado ones out of China right now, uh, this is an obsolete product, and there will not, you know, once they're all purchased, they're all gone. There, there won't be any more. They're not going to make more of them. This was a custom order chip. This wasn't an off-the-shelf chip, so it's not like, you know, you could go make a minimum order of. 10,000 of them, they'd be like, well, we need the custom order sheet from you, so uh, it, you know, it's just not possible to get, when, once these are gone, they're gone, so we need to be able to figure out what we can transfer from other ones, because there's a ton of these trailblazers getting crushed in junkyards right now, and if these microcontrollers can be swapped in, it'd be a good idea to, you know, grab you a couple of these to keep around, because you know, how often are we really going to see dead microcontrollers? Uh, I, I've i only seen two or three, and they were all from self-repair attempts, and they, you know, shorted out the whole thing, and pop goes to the microcontroller. So, all right, um, enough of me rambling. Let's get into this, because uh, whenever I do these big solder things, they tend to take a while, so let's get this thing done. Okay, so here comes the easy part. Let's uh, get this thing off the board, so give it some flux. I can aim at all. All right, and we have the bottom preheater. That's what this shiny metal is right here. Uh, we're gonna go up to uh, around 400 Celsius on that, and then three because it's it's pretty high up, so it loses some heat there. And then 370 Celsius here, uh, waiting on that to heat up. And here we go. And this is the easy part, getting it off. 
Then again, getting it on is really not that hard either. It just takes a second to line it up. You gotta get the flux out and get the solder wick, clean up the pads, and then it goes on pretty easy. Alright, and that's how I get these big packages off. Um, <laughs> I don't like them to... Sometimes when you just kind of push them off, they, they stick to other things and you end up with lifted pads. So I like to flip, flip them upside down real quick. And that's all there is to it. Nice and easy, we got it off. So let's turn this thing down. Um, first we turn it down, then we turn it to cool. It helps prevent any... Um, uh, micro fractures or anything like that so bottom heat it's really important when you're doing these larger packages and you might see my balding head for a second I'm just looking over it yeah I don't see any lifted pads uh, so my next thing I'm gonna figure out and I'll do this off camera is where the RD pin goes on here because uh, you have two options when you're putting these into uh, BSL you can use um, the POL4 which is going to that resistor right there let me zoom it in so you guys can actually see see there we go alright that's your POL4 resistor right there and your TXRX resistors are right here and I'm assuming RD is going to another pin uh, but it may be no stuff but I'll have to look under the microscope and find that so that way we know it for future reference because you can use either one um, but POL4 works so we, that's what I use to get the data off. Uh, next step is to solder the new one on. I will record some of that, um, not all of it. I'm going to get it lined up and tacked in first, uh, just because that's really the hardest part. Once I get it tacked in place, I'll do the drag solder and everything. I hand solder them on myself. I don't use uh, solder paste. Uh, I don't know. Solder paste is a pain to store, so I just don't use it. Okay, so I got some big ugly tacks on there and got it all lined up under the microscope. So now let's just give it a little drag solder here and then we'll clean it up underneath the microscope because definitely some of those tacks are a little excessive there. And this microcontroller, I'm still going to end up using it. It did have two uh, bent pins on it, so once we get under the microscope we'll probably find that we have some pins we gotta heat up and then try to line them back up again alright so now we got two rows set up so we can take some of this excessive solder off and then we just try to pull all of it down to one end here and we still gotta good bound excessive there I mean that's all all of those pins are bridged right there just because of the excessive amount I used uh, getting it lined up there all right let's give it one more pull here and looking at the naked eye we probably have three uh, three of them bridged there but we'll take care of that once we uh, get it underneath the microscope. All right. Just put a little bit of solder on there. All right. Yeah, we got a couple of bridges right there, which we we're expecting. And just clean them right up with the solder wick. And that's all there is to it. That row is probably perfect, but I can't tell by the naked eye. I'll have to check it under the microscope. We know, I can see clear as day some bridge right there. I guess I'll go ahead and take care of it before we get under the microscope. That's where the bend was in it too. Oh yeah, I got a bunch of bridge right here. 
you know, once you're no longer able to pull it with the soldering iron, you know, you just need a little more flux in there. Alright, I need to cut this off. There's no point in working with that much, uh, going slack on it. So just trim it and then continue. Having a two-inch flag of solder wicks just not helping you any. Yeah, it looks like I got a bridge there. Kind of hard to tell, though. All right. Like I said, we'll check it all under the microscope. All right, let's uh, switch over to the microscope. Probably have some bridges there we got to clean up, but that's all there is to hand soldering one of these things on. Okay, not uh, sh entirely sure what the condition of this chip was before I put it on here. Uh, so I don't remember if this one still has a flash on it or not. But let's just, uh, out of curiosity, see if maybe it has a flash on here. What will happen with a Silverado flash on, on this guy? So, Okay. It's not hot. Doesn't seem to have gotten damaged. It does seem to try to boot up, but hmm, just not quite right. Interesting. Okay, you guys probably, well, I'm 100% sure you guys can't see it, but I uh, soldered on some 44 gauge uh, wire from uh, POL4 to, or sorry, not POL4, RD um, to uh, ground just so that way both of those were pulled down because this one's the one out of the Silverado I don't know it's been giving me weird things without pulling RD down so that's what I'm doing with it all right so power it up and let's move this over to make sure we can see because that camera takes up down there all right let's try to connect to it all right we successfully connected uh, so let's um load that intel hex file I pulled off of the other one um, I forgot what I labeled it why is it all files I just want hex there we go alright trailblazer okay and we will write this thing so let's go to the settings configuration cool we got the syscon turned on alright should be able to write. Let's see here. Sorry, I'm having a brain fart. Okay, yeah, sorry. We need to go back in a configuration. This hadn't been removed. Okay. Okay, let's reconnect to it. This should fix it. All right, clear all selection, add selection, program. All right, so it's writing to it. Uh, Y'all have already seen me program this stuff before, so I'll just program the whole chip and report back in the videos. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I uh, just finished programming it. Let's uh, take everything off of here and uh, see what we get. See what happens. Okay. And let's get this guy off too. All right. 
Okay, let's power it up and see. Okay, okay. So here is the test. We finally, I got got it off. Um, I managed to rip one of the resistors. Oops. Uh, so I had to replace that. But now let's uh, power it up and uh, test it and see. Luckily I didn't damage the traces when I pulled that resistor up. But okay. So it seems to kind of work. It's really slow. Like, okay, we're waiting for that. Okay. So it's not. Let's see. Is it. Let me see. Is it actually slow or is it just booting up slow? I don't know. I, I don't know if I would call this successfully working. I mean, it works. It powers up and runs uh, with this different microcontroller, but with its correct flash on there, it's not getting hot. Um, I'm just not sure. Is, is that boot slow or is it running slow? I mean, it seems to be responsive to touching the button there. I'll have to take some of these stepper motors off because uh, he sent it to me with these X15s on here and they're all missing the rod. Yeah, these X15s always do that. Yeah, let me take a couple of these stepper motors off, put them on there, see if it communicates right. But, I mean, it's sort it, it seems to work right other than booting up really slow on that initial boot. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to change a stepper motor out and see see if the whole thing's just slow or if it's just a slow boot. Because if the whole thing's slow, this is definitely not a successful thing. But if it just boots up slow, I mean, if you're in a pinch, this works. So, you know, I don't think it would be the correct way of fixing these things right now. But, I mean, this, not this microcontroller, the microcontroller that goes on here is, is no longer available. You, I can't find it for sale anywhere, so, like, I don't know. Let's let's try some stepper motors and see. If the whole thing's slow, we'll call this a failure. If if it's just booting up slow, we'll call it semi-successful. So, we'll go. Okay, so this will be the kind of final test of the video, and I'll wrap it up here. But uh, let's power it up and see what happens. Now I threw two stepper motors on here, just two random ones I grabbed out of the junk pile. Um, it's the junk pile of known working miscellaneous not C5s or X15s. I'll end, I end up selling them on eBay for cheap. But, oh, yeah, not wrong one. All right. Let's see here. Okay, so, they, you know, it's just a screen that seems to be slow. Um, maybe they're always like that, and I've just never noticed it. I'll have to ask, because I don't think I powered it up without the, um, uh, with the original microcontroller. But let's see. Let's see if these are slow. Um... I think green speedo yeah green speedo it it seems to be walking normal it doesn't seem to be jumping around you know well i mean i, I don't think y'all could see that i think my arm was in the way but you know it, it jumps because i'm just tapping it to ground it's not actually on there but like it seems to be a smooth movement on it um let's see let me power up my test box and give it some communication over here. I think I'm going to have to restart the text box, so... <laughs> That's so funny to me that the screen's so slow. Yeah, I mean, that that seems to be responding. That should be coolant temperature. Yeah, I put a big hand on there. It was just, it makes it easier to see if it's moving smoothly or not with the bigger hand, because it's that longer stroke. I mean... Yeah, it really just seems to be that screen slow on boot up. Is it always like that with the Trailblazers? Because, I, I, I mean, the Trailblazers do have those two, um, uh, what you call it, um, two different VFD drivers down there. There's there's two of them driving this VFD, not just one. So maybe they're just slow when they boot up. I don't know. Y'all have to let me know. If it's just slow when it boots up all the time, because I, I don't do enough of these Trailblazers to know, but if, if they're slow all the time, I'd call this a successful repair. If if it's just being slow because it's this one, I would call this semi-successful, like last resort, fixing your own thing. I wouldn't sell these like this if, if that is being slow. Um, 
Because if it's being slow, it's it's hanging up on something while booting. Something's not responding right, which means something on here is not working. But I mean, these should be the two. These should be on two different. Because uh, you have two um, stepper drivers here, so these two should be on two different ones. Um, I mean, the park reverse neutral's working. The LEDs are working, um, and the VFD is working, and it's reading the EEPROM. Um, Oh hey, so these are—I didn't realize these would do that. So they're like the old ones. You can you can add uh, miles to it without uh, putting it in drive. The uh, Silverados won't do this. The newer Silverados. Eh, maybe it's not. It doesn't look like it's counting up. Okay, maybe maybe these just had that on there. But yeah, I mean, it reads the EEPROM, so that's what I was looking for. Okay, well, I mean, this was a fun adventure. I'll uh, message Michael and see if he wants me to put his microcontroller back on here and send it back to him or what he wants to do with this thing. But hey, I mean, it sort of works, so that's what I'll call it. It's like, it, I don't know. It was fun. It was fun trying it out, so that's what I'll call this project. This was just for fun. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you found it entertaining. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. I don't I don't know what my next videos are going to be. I've really... Holy cow. I thought I, thought I was going to be on this project of doing these microcontrollers for, for longer. So I'm going to have to find something new to do for videos. Yeah. I guess I'll just have to play with some of these STM32s. We can learn some stuff together. I don't know. Whatever, whatever the next videos will be, I'll see you in them.